With the rise of Asian hate crimes happening in America, Masid takes a look at the Watsonville Riots, one of the worst racial attacks against Filipinos in American history. From January 19 to 23, 1930, the Filipinos of Watsonville, California fell victim to harassment, physical abuse, theft, and murder by mobs of young white men who felt that the new migrants threatened to take away their jobs and their women. In the mid-1920s, Watsonville, a city in Santa Cruz County in California, was a vital source of fresh vegetables like asparagus, celery, and lettuce. But to cultivate and harvest these vast lands of vegetable crops required a large number of seasonal farm workers. Chinese and Japanese immigrants usually occupied these positions. But new anti-Oriental legislations, particularly the Immigration Acts of 1917 and 1924, banned Asians and non-white people from entering the U.S. It opened the doors for Filipinos to find work in the U.S. mainland. When Spain ceded the Philippines for $20 million in the Treaty of Paris, the Philippines became a U.S. colony and the Filipinos, U.S. nationals. It gave Filipinos the right to live and work in the United States and other U.S. territories. This unique status made them a valuable source of cheap labor in California and became the preferred Asian farm labor force in the 1920s to the early 1930s. According to 1930 census figures, about 30,000 of the approximately 45,000 Filipinos in America resided in California. More known by Filipino-American historians as the Manong Generation, this first wave of Filipino immigrants were mostly young single men who left the Philippines looking for work, often assigned to the intense labor of cultivating and harvesting asparagus, cucumbers, tomatoes, beans, celery, and lettuce, the farm owners saw these Filipinos as docile and easy to manage and liked them more than working class whites and other Asians. A report made by the local newspaper The Evening Pajaronian revealed that the Filipinos became the leading source of farm labor in Watsonville and were crucial to the success of the local lettuce industry. Amidst the Great Depression, a severe economic downturn that began in the U.S. and eventually spread worldwide, many American workers sought to exclude Filipinos from California farm labor. The California State Federation of Labor and the California Joint Immigration Committee lobbied heavily in Washington and Sacramento for anti-Filipino legislation. In 1934, Congress responded to this request from California by signing the Tidings McDuffie Act, limiting the entry of Filipinos to the United States to just 50 people per year. But aside from the threat of taking away jobs from whites, Filipinos also challenged and opposed white social norms by dating and marrying Caucasian women. As a result, California enforced anti-miscegenation laws to prohibit unions between Filipinos and whites. Since 1901, Section 69 of the California Civil Code has stated that all marriages of white persons with Negroes, Mongolians, or mulattoes are illegal and void. But Salvador Roldan, a Filipino Ilocano who wished to marry his British fiancé Marjorie Rogers, asserted that the civil code did not apply to them because he was not a Mongolian but a Malay. On January 27, 1933, the California Court of Appeals ruling on Salvador Roldan v. Los Angeles confirmed that Filipinos were Malays and not Mongolian. With the help of scientific research by anthropology expert Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, Justice T. Archbold ruled that Filipinos were indeed Malays and legally allowed to marry whites. But the court victory did not last for long. On August 21, 1933, Governor James Rolfe signed two bills invalidating all previous Filipino marriages with whites. The new bill included the Malay race under Section 69 and therefore prohibited Filipinos from marrying Caucasian women. This jealousy and anger over labor competition plus the racial mixing between Filipino men and white women did not bode well for the city of Watsonville and was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. At an autumn festival in Exeter, a small farming community in the San Joaquin Valley, white male youths shot rubber bands at Filipinos seen with local girls. Other white youths shoved migrants off the sidewalk or threw stones at them. Out of anger and frustration, a young Filipino farm laborer pulled out a knife and attacked two of the hecklers, Adolf Borgman and Harry Latham. In retaliation, an angry mob of 300 descended upon the ranch of E.J. Firebaugh and torched the barn where the young Filipino was staying. Luckily, he and other Filipino farm workers escaped and fled to nearby cities such as Visalia, Tulare, and Fresno. On December 5, 1929, the Watsonville Evening Pajaronian featured on their front page a picture of a Filipino immigrant, Perfecto Bandalan, embracing a local white teenager, Esther Schmink. About a month later, on January 11, 1930, 
a Filipino taxi dance hall opened in Palm Beach, a few miles from Watsonville, where white girls could dance with Filipinos. The evening Pajaronian called it a Filipino pleasure club. Tensions rose as young white men started gathering in the streets of Watsonville. After a week of restlessness and discontent, the evening Pajaronian splashed on their front page the headline, State Organizations Will Fight Filipino Influx Into County. The community's anger suddenly boiled over. The inflammatory article incited five days of violence. From January 19 until the early morning of January 23, angry mobs of around 700 roamed the streets of Watsonville and Pajaro hunting for Filipinos. White men dragged Filipinos out of their homes and beat them, while others threw the migrant farm workers off the Pajaro River Bridge. On January 21, a white mob attacked a taxi dance hall in Palm Beach and then targeted local ranches that employed and housed Filipinos. The following day, 46 Filipinos sought refuge at the city council's room after being chased down the street by a horde of angry white men. The angry mob then took to the San Juan Road and began hunting and attacking Filipinos indiscriminately. Later that night, a group of rioters raided the John Murphy Ranch on San Juan Road, four miles south of town in the Pajaro District. A carload of marauders fired several shots into a bunkhouse located inside. One of the bullets killed 22-year-old Fermin Tobera, who was shot in the heart while hiding in a closet. Local authorities later convicted seven men for the rioting, but none were found guilty for murdering Tobera. The anti-Filipino frenzy continued beyond Watsonville, with violence occurring in Stockton, Salinas, San Francisco, and San Jose. News of the riots resulted in street protests in the Philippines in solidarity for Filipinos in America. The body of Fermin Tobera was sent back to Manila and accorded a state funeral. It reignited the country's national longing for Philippine independence. Seven months after the riots, Filipino lettuce pickers in America carried out successful strikes in Salinas in 1934 and 1936, which became the catalyst for establishing the Filipino labor movement in the U.S. On September 4, 2011, in a resolution authored by Assemblyman Luis Alejo, the state of California apologized for nearly 100 years of discrimination towards Filipinos and Filipino Americans. And on November 13, 2020, 90 years after the riots, through a council resolution brought forth by Mayor Rebecca J. Garcia, the city of Watsonville formally apologized to the local Filipino community for the 1930 anti-Filipino attacks. Manuel Quintero Bersamin, Watsonville's first Filipino-American mayor, expressed his thanks to the members of the city council for moving forward with the resolution. The Watsonville riots is etched forever in America's history of racial hate and violence. For nearly a century, Filipinos in California suffered injustice and inequality. But despite the hatred and the hardships, the Manongs persevered, and their spirit of hope and courage lives on.